Hey guys, I want to try to get in around lunchtime here before I go outside. You know, like like you guys are doing, right? Going outside and enjoying the sunshine and uh, the warmth. Um, I should take my hat off for a minute. I don't want to be here too long. I want to talk about a couple things though, like that global warming thing. Yeah, how's it going up there, guys? I've been watching TV. In fact, pretty crazy. 36 inches of snow. Not to mention there's more. Don't you worry. Winter's not over. Buck saw Honey Phil went back and said, I'm gone. Now, down here, we actually got a pretty decent day going. Maybe hit 80. Um, we're going to get out there and try to get some things done. Um, not do it for any rain for a while. But I want to go ahead and touch base and suggest a couple things to y'all in case you're getting a little chilly. Maybe not wanting to be up there in the snow because it's going to be a lot more year after year after year. Now, once upon a time when I had uh, Tiny Texas Houses and I was doing a lot of stuff on there and people actually reading it, and I was writing about, well, maybe not being totally a believer in global warming caused by human beings and not having any snowballs by 2020. Not to mention New York City being underwater. Miami being sunk by now, and uh, oh goodness, there's a few other things that there were um, Chicken Little and the sky falling and stuff. But that doesn't mean that things can't go wrong. It doesn't mean that she, you know, stuff's happening. It's just not quite what they said was going to happen, right? Now, the question becomes one of did did they know? Did somebody know? And just not share that maybe it was going to get cold instead of hot. No, actually, it was being talked about. See, I got more of these grapes today, guys. Savor the day that you can afford grapes. Such beautiful grapes. Huh. Why? So that you remember today, food. As yet, I can't figure out how to grow these. I can grow some grapes, but they aren't near as good as these. So, why am I eating grape in front of you? To make the point, you grow grapes up there in that snow. You got six more weeks. Look at that guy. Hmm. I got dancing beard, man. Okay. So here's the point. You got enough food packed away in the fridge? Do you notice there aren't too many trucks on the road right now doing real good in certain parts of the country? Did you notice it's going to be that way for about three or four more weeks? According to the forecast. Did you notice that we have some of the highest barometric pressure readings ever? Not to be mentioned by the mass media. As well as the lowest barometric pressure ever. Now, for most common people, we don't learn about barometric pressure in high school. Or college, for that matter. And what is that? That is the pressure the atmosphere is putting down on the surface of the earth. And it shows up in the forms of many things, but um, then there's these atmospheric depressions. And that means, in other words, one spot's got more pressure, and thus it gets depressed all the way down to the ground. And it happens to carry with it maybe, uh, say, an example up in uh, Granite Shoals, Texas, 18 inches of water in one day. Or 21 inches of water in one day. They had both up there, oddly enough. But then Granite Shoals is around a granite quarry. And that's a perfectly good ground for energy to travel through. Energy. Yeah, see, now we have the instrumentation to show that these energy spirals, like tornadoes, go up into the air. And just like on the sun, one goes up and one's spinning this way and one's spinning this way. And between the two of them, we actually have a, a large arc of energy that we can't see. Humans can't see with our eyes. Ergo, we didn't know it existed up until recently. Now, tiny houses, why do I always promote tiny houses? Because when shit hits the fan, I hope I didn't upset anybody with that bad word, um, the problem becomes one of, well, how do you maintain your happiness, your calm, your cool? It's hard to do with stress of how am I going to pay for my house, how am I going to pay for my car, how am I going to pay for my, how am I going to have my new, my new, Vacation I gotta 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 have. 
you know, it's time to start rethinking some of this. Seriously, guys. My age group, I'm 65 years old. And just like all the rest of us, right? Mm, yeah, we're ready. Or may need a few weeks prep, right? Except problem is things are changing really fast. In case you haven't noticed, by the way, not that I'm into catastrophism, but frankly, you ought to consider that it's not exactly a new thing. Catastrophism is a way of perceiving things. Ben Davison's putting out a new book on this, which is a good book because it talks about the sun and how the sun causes some things to happen. This isn't like he's the only guy that knows it. He's just simply one of the guys compiling something at the moment. He has uh, suspicious observers on YouTube, good place to check and kind of get his version, his take on what's going on. Now, there's more than one take, no matter who you are. Why? Well, unfortunately, people do get compromised out there. Yeah. Not hard to do if you think about it, if you got an Achilles heel. What's your Achilles heel? Mama? Babies? You worry about getting killed? You worry about losing your job? What is your Achilles heel? What what can somebody take from you that'll stop you from speaking out? Lynn Wood, they're trying to take his license. Uh, Miss Green, they're trying to take her position in government. Trump, they're trying to crucify him for his positions. Personality-wise, I don't have to like people to have them as leaders necessarily. I need them to lead and make the correct decisions, not to take my rights away, not to step on me, not to destroy my life so they can have a better life, which seems to be kind of a, in that imaginary world of wibbly and wub, kind of a theme. These archetypes. What is an archetype? That's a personality. You see over and over again, you know, the liars, the cheaters, the thieves, the, the ones that would... Oh, I just smile at you and flatter you and, oh my God, you're just the greatest thing that ever hit, man. If it weren't for ketchup, I'd be using you on my sandwich. That's how good you are. Well, I'll tell you what. You got to learn to spot the flatterers, false flattery. You got to learn to spot the people trying to take and reach into your wallet and pull it out. And it's difficult to do, especially the ones that believe that somebody's going to be sent to take and solve all your problems for you. Because you're always looking for that person to save and solve all your problems for you. And a lot of people are looking to take advantage of people that are looking for that person to come along and solve all their problems for them. In fact, that kind of makes you a mark. As, a, as a, a scammer would call it, you're a mark. Why? Because you want somebody else to give you something for nothing and you think it's going to happen. It don't happen. Now, the weather... The reason I brought this up today is because it's one of those things, you know, wow, you thought you knew everything. All you guys out there that used to slam my ass because I go out there and say, you know, it might get cold. You might want a small, tiny, tiny house that you can heat easy. You might want to dump all those other problems you got because how are you going to maintain that house with eight feet of snow on top of it? Not that that would ever happen. On the other hand, I did notice today in purview on the internet that there are roofs and buildings collapsing. In growing numbers, as the old people don't get up there and scrape off the three foot of snow that fell in 24 hours, so they're not prepared for the next two feet of snow that's coming, and the next three foot after that. And thanks to Puxitani Phil, six more weeks, guys. Now, if you want to know what's coming, look at China. Look at Russia. Open up your eyes and stop watching some stupid TV show. And look at the weather as it's being interpreted by people who are very good at this thing. Watch something about the earthquakes. You know, more volcanoes, 43 of them are active right now. Even one in California that's just mysteriously not being talked about. But you can look on the plumes on windy.com for PM 2.5 fumes coming out of the ground. And there's a plume coming out of California going straight up and then turn around and run back over all over the New Mexico and Nevada, but people don't care, right? No, no, not the fact that it's one of the most carcinogenic size particles that you can possibly breathe in. So your children in 30 years, if they make it that long, might assuredly have cancer. 
what do you do? Well, luckily, everybody's wearing a mask, right? That does help a little bit. There's all these people going to go to certain places and hide. Be prepared. Except if you go in a place where the ash plumes and these clouds of smoke blow over the top of you and you don't have a gas mask on, well, you're prepared to die. If you're not living underground in a filtered air environment where you can actually stop all that fine particle stuff from getting into you, and still find air. Maybe bring it up through the water, you know, filtering it. Bringing it through a number of different portals where it can be filtered. But you got to get it out of the air. You can't just go breathing um, stuff that OSHA would say will kill you, which is what's in the air right now coming out of volcanoes. Some of the types of plumes, there is a sort of almost a stringiness to the to the ash. Um, but of course, it's not like a regular string. It's a glass string that breaks up inside your lungs if you inhale it. Um, radiation? Well, you know, radiation is an issue. You got to think about that. But I'll tell you what, right now, volcanoes are putting out so much more crap into the air than humans could possibly consider. And this is single bursts going up 40,000 feet in the air. How's it get back down? It falls. Little tiny particles. But they don't just fall straight down. They fall wherever the wind pushes them, which happens to be over western United States right now on a large, large, large scale because of the volcanoes in Russia. Because of the volcanoes all the way along the coast of Japan, the Ring of Fire. Now, if you look at the models, if you look at the studies, if you want to take some time and watch that instead of Sophie's Got Warts or something on TV, then I would recommend that you go ahead and take a, um, a moment or two to educate yourself. It's called autodidactic. I highly recommend being autodidactic. That means after high school, guess what? Learning doesn't stop. After college, you got your degree. You're a doctor now of what? Stupidity? Because it's a stupid person that believes they know everything. Taught to them by people in college who can't excel. Therefore, they teach. It's an old saying. If you want to know what the box looks like, go to college. They'll teach you. This is the box. Don't get out of the box. Uh, but that doesn't explain that. Oh, that's outside the box. Stay in the box. Oh, uh, yeah, but the geology, it doesn't explain this. Uh, get back in the box, man. This is a, you know, in, in this class, you only raise your hand and ask questions that are part of in the box. I had a lot of problems in school. I asked too many damn questions. They won't, you know, they luckily didn't have drugs when I was in school to go ahead and give me Adderall or uh, other things like that. And I changed schools so often they couldn't really tag me. I changed schools 13 times. And I kept my A average and I graduated with honors and all that kind of crap. Didn't do open many books or anything like that. But I learned so many things wrong. Like, the smallest thing in the world is an electron and a neutron and a proton, and there's nothing smaller. I was taught that. So was my whole generation. And you know what? A lot of never went back and learned otherwise. Well, I'm not, I can't say I'm proud of my generation, all of them. There's a few of us that learned and a few of us that are out here ahead of you trying to make this path good for the younger ones. But guess what? The problem is, the problem is, is that my generation taught the 40-year-olds, and then they taught the... 20 year olds and frankly right now the education level about energy spirit um telepathy all these things that uh, you know you don't believe in you know, or some do guess what historically speaking the ones that do they get burned at the stake they get dunked in the water as witches or warlocks they get crucified for breaking from the system, the religion, the cult of the times. A culture matured. No, but somebody's in charge enforcing this is the rules. Americana is a culture established primarily by Christians. But a wide, wide variety of Christians. That, that word is actually not definitive in that there's a lot of Christians that personally on their own level in their church think that all the other Christians out there are wrong and they're the only right Christians 
just like there's Muslims and Jews and everybody else, that everybody seems to think they're the only ones right. How are we going to find peace? Don't we all have the right to be right? Or do you, somebody, one group, have to kill everybody else off? And what if the group that kills everybody off doesn't believe in a God? That gives them the extra ability to go ahead and kill without mercy, without regret, without conscience. To lie, to cheat. You know, they just might win. They don't have any rules. The other team, in the book of Wibblery and Wub, the other team, they abide by the rules. They go for peace. They only strike out to defend what they love, what they cherish, what they believe in to be true, not child trafficking, not um, the right to kill other things, people, beings, babies, without consideration at all for their rights. That's just a different team. You can't mix that and mix good and come up with a middle ground. Okay, we only kill half a baby this week. Can you do that? Hmm. We only starve half the people in the country, but I'm going to... Let's pick the bad ones. Who's that? Uh, nowadays, ask the party in the, in the Book of Wolverine. Well, it became one of these deals. Like, oh, the puppies. It's the puppies. They're the bad guys. Determined by the demons. And, you know, and this is just one of those crazy nightmares that Darby has in the stories. You know, that story was one of me he's waking up and it's like the world has been taken over by these crazies. And he's having this nightmare that these people are in charge and they're just getting everybody all riled up for the purposes almost as if they're trying to go ahead and create a civil war. What a nightmare. And so Darby's trying to figure out what's going on. He wakes up and he goes and turns on the TV and lo and behold, same shit. Hmm. Now is the dream or the nightmare in the TV, is there a difference? Is either one of them real? Oh, no, that's right. One is totally fabrication. It's it's a TV. It's actually not based on this facts. I mean, there's all sorts of programs using special effects and, and not news, but entertainment that appears to be news. And really, when you think about it, there's really not a whole lot of up-to-date facts, it appears. Why do I say that? I guess it's a matter of what's fake, what's real. Am I? I'm right here. Do I look fake? What you're seeing to me, I guess fake is, am I real? Am I flesh and blood? Not in front of you. I'm an image. A digitally projected image on a screen with a voice. Is that my voice or did somebody sitting over there in some other costume carrying on with the keyboard making me sound like this? At this point, you say, hell no, you can't do that. Now, 10 years from now, you're going to say, oh, you know what? Look close. Is that CGI? Is that a robot? Because when we started playing Doom back when I had the first cyber cafe in Texas, they were really not very well pixelated monsters that you could kill without mercy. Boom, 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 all the guns you wanted. Now, you can almost look them in the eye when you shoot them. They bleed and splatter all over the place. What's that do? That trains you. That dulls the impact of the shock. At least to the gamer. They have no idea yet. They have no idea that when you really do shoot a person or fly that drone over that wedding and drop those bombs, the agony and the horror and the just absolute destruction that'll come out of a kid thinking he's playing a video game. When actually they've connected him up to a drone because he's just so damn good. They might as well use his talents without asking, huh? Imagine that could happen. You should. In the book of Wibbley and Wub, it's a nightmare. One of the many. Well, I just got on here to tell you, as I go out there in my snowsuit, 
and uh, maybe even kayak today. We're talking about kayaking today. You got to go over and pick up a doghouse somebody gave us. Actually, a pretty darn big one. Chicken coop it's going to be, actually. And um, they've gifted it to us. We're going to put it on a little trailer, bring it back over here, set it up so that our chickens can be sorted and separated and we'll have more eggs. And out there in the grass, out there in the flowers, out there in Salvage, Texas, that fantasy land. See it out here back here? Look at that. There's a door to it right there. See that door? That's the door to fantasy. My fantasy. Darby, who also is, of course, just a fantasy. Here for your entertainment. Strictly. Not news. No facts. Just conjecture. Imagination. And inviting you to be part of a quantum story. How do we, W-I-I, all of us, eyes, join together to see what's really going on. To tell the truth. To share. To use this wonderful system to make more people aware. Help me spread this little virus, this little wibbly set of words to human consciousness around the world. Let everybody know we together are with you. Doom, yeah, that was a game. It was really easy in the beginning. It got really crazy. I had the first cyber cafe where you could sit down to six different computers and linked them all up, had a network, and you could play with each other. We had a little divider so you could see the other guy's screen. And that was one of the first things. 1996, imagine that. How far that's come. Now, it's almost real. Sadly. That Grand Theft Auto thing, man, when you start running over babies and getting points and killing people and getting points, and that's when we knew we had a problem. The biggest battles will be fought within. What are we putting into those children's heads? My son was 10 years old when I started that. My son died at 25, probably killed at the hands of kids whose parents and brothers and sisters had all been bombed out by American bombs in Egypt and Syria and other places. He was in Paris where I asked him not to go. He went into the apartment complexes, I think, where I asked him not to go, where they were squatting. And he's a tall, white American who just cut off his dreadlocks, so he looked like a skinhead with an iPhone 10 years ago when it was worth you know, three years' worth of income. And a guitar and a backpack. He probably made a good target for some angry kids. And ended up in the river at 42 degrees never to come out alive. As an American who's paid a price that I don't want anybody to pay for, please, let's stop the war. My dad went to Vietnam. My friends when I was in the army. We don't need to keep doing we, the ones that actually are out there dying, fighting it, not the leaders. We, all the eyes. Only we can stop this from going on. Hey, let's communicate. Wibble eyes. Create stories, create music, create videos. Become part of the never ending story of wibblery. And Wub, a world union of beings that is then elevated into the intercosmic Wub society of other planets that are coming here to help us. Trust me, we're not alone. God sends many, many forms of help. If you believe, you're not worried. You're not afraid. You're preparing. Preparation comes from within, guys. Prepare the vessel. Prepare the heart. Prepare the mind. And blessings. Enjoy the weather, guys. I'll tell you what, I sure am. Have a great one.